motion to simple harmonic motion. That's the motion of objects that basically oscillate back and forth. So um, here's the lesson objectives for today. So two things really we want to aim for. One is looking at the condition and the definition of simple harmonic motion, um, which can be summed up with a simple equation, f equals minus kx, which actually should be familiar to you because it looks a lot like Hooke's law and it is closely related to that. Um, and be able to identify whether some oscillating motion is simple harmonic or whether it's something else. Um, and then we're also going to look at um, displacement time graphs for oscillating objects and what we can find out from those and move from those onto um, velocity and acceleration time graphs, which are both things that you need to know about. Okay, so for starters, um, we're looking at simple harmonic motion, but what's harmonic motion? So harmonic motion is simply motion that repeats itself. I made a lovely joke there. Repeats itself, repeats itself. And you should be fairly familiar with this. Like Any time you see something vibrating back and forth, that's some form of harmonic motion. And in your last assignment, I actually asked you um, to use FET to sort of play around with masses on springs. So things like this system here, where it would bounce up and down, um, or pendulums that swing back and forth. And in that assignment, I tried to get you to sort of, or tried to draw your attention to a couple of things. Um, and the first one was that the time period for an oscillation. Now, I'm just going to change this slightly because I need a pen to draw on here. So let me just get myself a pen. Here we go making me wait. Okay, the time period for an oscillation, so for a mass on a spring, just to be clear, that's for it to go up, back down, and back to the rest position again. Or you could have started at either of the extremities, or for a pendulum swinging back and forth, it could be from the centre, back out to the side, back over to here, and back again. For one complete um, time period, it turned out that that time period was independent of the amplitude of the oscillation. I'm just going to go back to full screen. Now that's really going to be uh, the main thing that we're focusing on when we're talking about simple harmonic motion, that this time period is independent of the amplitude. And also, in both of these systems, there was a restoring force that was trying to return the object or the moving part of the system back to its rest position, or sometimes we'll call that the equilibrium position. So, um, probably easiest to think about with this mass in the spring system, that if I pull it down, there will be a force returning it back towards the centre here, and if I allow it to move past that position and the spring gets compressed, the combination of the spring pushing back and gravity provides a restoring force back towards the centre again. So these are the two sort of key points that for simple harmonic motion um, are always going to be true. So the period's going to be independent of the amplitude and there's always going to be a force back towards the centre. So I might pause this if I was you and make a note of that. Okay, so one of the things about this period being independent of the amplitude, and um, that's why simple harmonic motion isn't always, you know, it's an ideal situation. So uh, take for example, this, and I let it swing back and forth, maybe in front of the camera this time, let it swing back and forth, um, this motion's actually damped, and eventually um, it stops moving. So the time period isn't exactly independent of the amplitude, but it, it's a very good approximation of it. Okay, so simple harmonic motion, the period's independent of the amplitude, there'll always be a force back towards the centre. 
period is independent of amplitude, force towards. Well, I've said center on here. I'm just going to move this little picture. Uh, a restoring force towards the rest position might be a better way of phrasing that. Now, this is an older version of this presentation that I used to sort of deliver. And I've moved from this, like I've done with some of my others, to look at how actually would it appear in a mark scheme of an exam. So the bits that you actually need to take down, you actually need to learn are, right, one, that there's always a restoring force towards the central or rest position. And then the bit in the box, well, that is our definition of simple harmonic motion. And that is that the force is always proportional to the displacement and always towards the rest position. It'll be marked correct if you call it the equilibrium position, but rest position is easier to write. Now, if the force is proportional to the displacement, and we already know from Newton's second law that force is proportional to acceleration, um, an equally true definition of simple harmonic motion would be that acceleration is proportional to displacement and towards the rest position. Now what you'll find is that you very rarely get an exam question that doesn't have this on it, um, if it's about simple harmonic motion, obviously. So um, you need to learn this, and it, you'll always get two marks. You'll get one mark for this force proportional bit, one mark, and another mark towards the rest position. Now, um, we normally sum that sentence up with this expression, F equals minus Kx. Uh, really what we're saying that F is proportional to the displacement and we've introduced some constant here. Now the interesting bit is this minus sign and the minus sign is basically indicating that it's back towards the rest position. So you have to learn that bit as well. So given that you have to ask yourself whether certain things are simple harmonic motion or not. So how about this first example? Um, I'm going to apologise for the quality of this drawing. Um, that is me jumping up and down on a trampoline. Is that simple harmonic motion? Pause for a second and have a think. No, it is not simple harmonic motion. And it's not simple harmonic motion because, well, as this person jumps up and down, they are returning to its rest position. So they start at the ground, they jump up, and then there's a force restoring them back down. But the entire time that they're in the air, the force downwards is equal to their weight. The force trying to return them to the ground doesn't get bigger the further they are away from the ground. In simple harmonic motion, the further the person was from the rest position, the greater the force bringing them back to the ground. And that's not what happens with gravity. So a person jumping up and down is harmonic motion. It's repeating itself, but it's not simple harmonic motion. Now, this is worth making a note of because they love trying to... Sort of, well, you'll see this. I'll give you questions later on. But they'll say, is this situation simple harmonic motion? Is this sim uh, simple harmonic motion? Another very common one would be... Well, that's a terrible drawing. I'm trying to draw with my finger on the mouse pad. Uh, would be a ball bouncing. It bounces up and down as it hits the ground. Is it simple harmonic motion? Absolutely not, because the further the ball is from the rest position, that doesn't affect the size of the restoring force. Whereas if it was, I don't know, well, let's just go with something on a spring. There you go. A ball on a spring. 
and this might be making you think about Hooke's law, the more I extend the spring, the greater the force returning it back to the rest position. And that's why a mass on a spring oscillating up and down is simple harmonic motion. So definitely get that down in your notes um, about how to recognize it. Look for a force that changes the further you are away from the, the equilibrium or rest. Okay, so the next thing is just looking at this equation just one more time. Okay, so what we say in this equation is that um, f equals minus kx, but that the k is just some constant, um, and it, it really depends on the oscillating system. So if you've got um, a pendulum swinging back and forth, um, that constant's going to be connected to the length of the pendulum, uh, and it's also going to be connected to gravity as well, which is why you can use pendulums um, to work out a value for g. If you've got a mass on a spring, though, the k is the same k that it is in Hooke's law, the spring constant, um, which is kind of convenient and also makes this very, very simple. Now, I'm sure you've taken this down, um, but I've just jotted something down over the side over here that you might want to think about. Um, it's that force is proportional to minus x and also a is proportional to minus x. And that is our conditions for SHM. So um, we're going we're gonna to move on now to a, a very common exam question. And they say, OK, you've got something like this oscillating back and forth. Can you plot a graph? Can you plot a graph of the size of the acceleration against how far it is de uh, depressed, that's the wrong word, displaced from its rest position? So if we start here, plot a graph showing the size of the acceleration versus, the rest, uh, versus um, its displacement. Um, and that might give you some axes like this. So there's A and X. And, um, well, could you do that for a second? Just have a think for a minute. Maybe sketch it on a bit of paper. Okay, so um, it's actually really easy. Um, problem is that we're going to spend time with simple harmonic motion, looking at graphs that all look like this. And people tend to go, oh, we have all things like this. And um, no, we go back to what we've said simple harmonic motion is. We've said F is proportional to minus X, where X is the displacement. Or we've said A is proportional to minus X. And if you just look at this one, that basically tells us what we've got to draw. It's a directly proportional um, relationship with a gradient that's negative. So I was going to draw it on here freehand, but I've prepared it in advance. So this is the graph that you're looking for. You see a graph of A against X with this gradient, a negative gradient, that is going to be a graph that's illustrating simple harmonic motion. So I really would make a note of that because you're going to see that time and time again. It's a really common multiple choice question and also a really common, well, it's just really a common question. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave this video. For the next video, I think it would make sense to have a little pendulum that you can swing back and forth and have a think about because we're, we're going to try and analyze the motion. Okay, I now have to figure out how to stop this. <laughs>